All right, guys, we're back, and it's time for a brand new security weather report. Exploit Kit Tracker is a community-focused site we are prototyping. Detect Zbot in mass using SSL data and a little elbow grease. And our researcher, Artsum, will break down some of the newest and most clever tricks to fish your users. Come join me and the research team for our second Cisco Umbrella weather report. I'm Brad Antonowitz, a security researcher at Cisco Umbrella. I'm bringing you the latest updates from one of my favorite spots in San Francisco, Clarion Alley. Now, we're just not here because of the impressive art. We're actually here because of the connection between hacking and graffiti. In the past, they were both sort of considered downright bad. But today, society recognizes that there could be good and useful applications for both, such as our next story, which is all about detecting bad hackers. Exploit Kit Tracker is a proof of concept community site used to track observations of exploit kits in the wild. Tags are added to each IP, domain, and URL to give insight into the campaign and the kit that the attacker is using. The last 30 days of data is shown in an awesome visualization on the main page. Researchers can request an API key if they'd like to contribute, and all data is public. With a single location to find exploit kit information, anyone can analyze it. For instance, we visualized all of the IP addresses and quickly uncovered dense clusters for particular ASFs. More relationships and trends can be uncovered by mapping the registrants to domain names. In some cases, dozens of malicious domains can be traced back to the same registrant. We discovered bad actors using content delivery networks that were built from Zbot infected hosts. Zbot's Content Delivery Network, or CDN, offers criminals a way to host a range of malicious content from short lifetime threats such as malware and ransomware to longer lifetime ones such as carding and cybercrime forms. And they even use SSL. We constructed a bipartite graph of SSL certificate common names and ASNs. This allowed us to group common names into frequency bands in such a way that the resulting outliers turned out to be domains leveraging the Zbot CDN. We were also able to tie the creation of the SSL certificate with the arrival of Zbot domain on the internet. The creation date was directly linked to when it was seen hosted on Zbot CDN. Finally, let's go grab some burritos with Artsum. He's one of our security researchers who's been studying the tactics used in phishing campaigns. All right, let's go. Before we grab some food, let's go talk to Artie. He's been doing great research and in looking into phishing campaigns. What's some of the latest tactics that fishers are using in their campaigns? So one of the trends that we recently noticed in uh, phishing campaigns is their abuse of free GLD hostings. One of the reasons it is uh, easy to use because most of the GTLDs outsource their registration to third parties who don't really care about security. The other reason is that uh, we see the broader specter of targeting companies one of them becoming uh, cryptocurrency. I didn't realize that there were so many attacks targeting cryptocurrencies. What's going on with that? The amount of attacks against cryptocurrency users uh, tripled just within the last three months. And uh, we're trying to do our side, protecting our users through blocking all of the phishing domains that we're able to discover with our NLP ring. Uh, however, we are also trying to support some open source project like MXDB, which are uh, displaying the information about all active ongoing phishing campaigns against cryptocurrency users. I even heard they're using SSL. You are right. Uh, a lot of companies start offering free SSL since we are seeing a trend to switch all of the internet to the protected HTTPS. However, there is a problem that you can't really apply the same process to every single user, so you have to implement some uh, less secure registration for uh, for free users. The registration is so easy and doesn't require that much information that anyone can get free a cell certificate, combine it with the phishing domain and start scamming people with that with a very high chance of success since a lot of people still think that the green padlock in your browser means you are secure. What, are the, what else are the attackers using to target their users? Uh, so one of the biggest trends within the last year is the ads poisoning. So what's happened, uh, fishers will use either uh, specifically created accounts for AdSense or stolen accounts for AdSense or any other advertising platform. The bad part of it is that people tend to uh, trust such companies as Google and Microsoft. So when they see uh, this type of domain in the advertising platform, they are willing to trust it since they think that those companies are taking care of all their ads and doing some filtering there, and which is not true at all. Artie, awesome research. I really love it. It's always good to hear more about these phishing campaigns. 
Let's go get some burritos. You know, anytime, let's do it. Nice.